take a peek at the magic heading your way. It's discovery. It's comedy. It's fitness and fantasy. It's a sensation, a celebration. Now, the best of the Disney Channel is coming to your world. On Walt Disney Home Video Cassettes, here's what you'll find inside. Each volume is packed with two full hours of new shows and old favorites. Howdy, folks. The kinds of programs kids yeah. like best. Shows that'll help wake them up, shape them up, and simply break them up. Shows that are designed to fire their imagination. Wow, we! The Disney Channel on home video cassettes. Each volume contains Good Morning Mickey, a sunshining assortment of favorite Disney cartoons and cartoon characters, Goofy, Donald, Pluto, and of course, Mickey Mouse. Then, direct from Pooh Corner, those classic storybook characters come to life in a series of magical adventures. Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, Piglet, Owl, Rabbit, and all their friends bid small children a nice, warm welcome to Pooh Corner. Why, it's more than just nice, it's Tiggerific. <laughs> the whole Disney gang gears up for work, manufacturing laughs at the Mouse Factory. It's a fantastic lineup of adventures, surprises, and special guest stars. Next, get ready for Donald Duck Presents, award-winning Disney animated shorts and featurettes. Then... You all ready to mouse size? Yeah! mouse size 20 full minutes of stretching, striving, dancing, and prancing. It's the modern, fun, and healthful road to physical fitness, Disney style. mouse size so if you're looking for the best in family entertainment, right at home. Who's fooling a customer? Welcome to the best of Disney comedy, Disney music, Disney magic, and Disney discoveries. Open your door to a brand new world of entertainment. The best of the Disney Channel on home video cassettes. It's terrific. <laughs> To go after old Yeller, he'll die without help. Don't miss the excitement of this heartwarming story. Entertainment at its finest from Walt Disney. Here you are, come back here. Best dog on dog in the world. Tigger. <laughs> Rabbit, Tigger, what happened just now? Uh, just when? When you bounced Eeyore into the river. Well, I didn't bounce him. He bounced me. Oh, I didn't really. Uh, I, uh, well, I, I just had a cough, you see, and I, and I happened to be behind Eeyore, and I said, uh, uh, that I said, uh, <laughs> What's the truth about Mother Goose? Turn these pages and you'll see We'll get the truth, the facts for sooth Solve this age-old mystery Little Jack Horner sat in a corner Eating his Christmas pie He put in his thumb and pulled out a plum And said, what a good boy am I Meet the Reverend Hill's angels. Ordinary ladies. Toby, give Betty back a creepy crawler. With everyday problems. Bye, Pam. Careful. See you later. Watch your nails. But when organized crime hits their town, the angels strike back. Hill's angels. What these ladies do to organized crime is divinely inspired. You have a right to remain silent, sucker. They're fearless. I expect to be murdered. Any minute. Diabolically clever. I got a tape recorder. Did you make the bed yet? Shh. Shrewd and cunning masters of pursuit. All led by a pantless preacher. A man of high moral fiber. How would you like to spice up your life a little? 
Walt Disney Productions, Hills Angels. It's Disney Gone Divine. Hurry up, everybody. Find a seat. The show's about to begin. But keep watching after the movie, because there's even more to come. Go to the gym. Hey, Maury. Oh, uh, hey, get that, will you? Sure. Frank resident. Hank, the unpaid butler speaking. <laughs> Hi, Beth. Yeah, he's here. Hold on. Hey, Maury, it's for you. I don't know what you see in the guy, Beth. Just because he's handsome, athletic, and intelligent, there's no reason to marry him. Traitor. Plenty more hey. fish in the sea. Take me, for example. Give me that. Yeah, yeah. I know, I have to be there at 7 tonight. Nicely dressed. Now, I'm just starting out on my run. Yeah. I'll reach your house 8 minutes, 12 seconds. Be there. Bye. Well, on my way over to Agnes's house, I'll stop by and see if you and Beth want to come with us tomorrow night to the wagon wheel for some New Orleans jet. <laughs> sure. It's well. <laughs> Back in a while, Ma. Don't be late, huh? Hey, I'm gonna dance you into the ground. We'll see. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Never mind the high dad. One thousand dollars cash on the barrel head. Oh, no, don't tell me. Dazzy Vance beat the Cincinnati Reds again. Shut him out. <laughs> Read him and weep. Okay, okay. Uh, just add it to my tab. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, Hank. Tomorrow night. Bye, Mr. Frank. <laughs> Hi, darling. Mm. So, tell you folks about our wedding plans? Uh-huh, I sure did. What'd they say? That you're the luckiest man in the world. You're right. Mmm, <laughs> perfume smells good. I wear it just for you. Bye. Seven o'clock. I told you. 
See, I thought about it. I think I'm going to stick this on life insurance. Keep your head up. Okay. Okay, Tommy. You want to go around with Tommy now? No, I think it'll just be a quick workout and I'm going to go home. Dempsey never turned down a good fight. Yeah? Well, okay. Good boy. explanation, Mr. Frank, but I'm afraid it wouldn't change your condition. What are you saying? I'm blind? I'm afraid so. No, I won't accept it. Mother's right. We're not giving up. We'll have the best eye doctor in this country. We'll find a way somewhere, somehow. Mr. Frank, I'm sorry. There is nothing that can be done. Nothing that can be done. Nothing that can be done. see anybody. It's been a whole week. I said no. Hi, Beth. How'd you know it was me? Your perfume. Oh, yes, ma'am. At a time like this, I don't know what to say. Except, I'm here for you. I don't want your pity. It's not pity. I just want us together. It won't work. You're just angry now, and I don't blame you. But that won't last, and then you'll need someone. You'll need me. Why do you want to be burdened by a cripple all your life? Out of loyalty? I'm afraid people say you deserted me? No, of course not. I'll tell him I gave you up. Laurie, please. Look! Be careful. Be careful? Yeah. I'll be careful. Mr. 
Frank, I know exactly how you feel. I face problems like yours every day. But there are things you can do once you accept your condition. Accept my condition? Adjust to it. Learn to read by the Braille method. I know it seems impossible at first, but with time, with concentration... Look, you don't understand. Oh, but I do. Believe me, I do. Oh, do you? I want my independence back. I want my life back again. Before you can make any progress, you have to reconcile yourself to the fact that you'll never enjoy the act of life you once had. I will not reconcile myself. I'm not going to be a burden to my mother and father. I'm going back to work to do what I used to do. You'll see. You'll all see. Of course, son. Of course. And uh, application for insurance. Maury, getting to your prospect is a real problem. How will you get around? I got it all figured out. On your own, it could be dangerous. I told you, I have it all figured out. Son, please, why not let me come along? No. I pay my own way. No. Wish me luck? Well, of course, son. Knock him dead, boy. blocks away. You're on West Ave. You mean? West Ave, I thought... Come on. I'll take you home. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, Nate, take me home. Okay, Ma, you can leave us. Jimmy and I have things to talk about. How you do? Hi. Okay, good. Well, I'm gonna keep my hand on your shoulder just like this. Oh, yes, sir. Right. Now, when we get into the man's private office, I want you to fade back. I, I don't want you sitting along beside me. I want him concentrating on what I say, not looking at you. Got it? Got it. Okay. And every school day, 3.30, you be here. And on Saturdays, we're gonna work from 9 until 1. That's every Saturday. This, this isn't school, this is a job, so there's no playing hooky. I understand. Good. Yeah, Three dollars a week must be more than you make with your paper out. <laughs> it sure is. Good. Maybe you'll learn something about the insurance business at the same time. Now, I'm going to expect you here tomorrow at... 3.30. Okay. I'll be here. Okay, see you later, Jimmy. Right, see you later, Frank. One step down. Three steps up.
sorry, Mr. Frank. There's no one home here either. But this is the ninth call we've made. Mm, just one of those days, I guess. Yeah, one of those days. Let's go. Three steps down. Now the truth. Sir? You've been lying to me. No, I haven't. You ring the bell once, we wait, then you say nobody's home. Well, things don't happen that way. If no one answers, a person rings the bell twice or three times, and then if no one answers, you know nobody's home. So tell me the truth. Someone did come to the door each time, didn't they? Please, Mr. Frank. They just didn't want to face a blind man, did they? I'm sorry, but... Did they? No, they didn't. All right, don't you ever lie to me again. Or try to save my feelings. I want the truth or we can't work together, you understand? I understand. It's okay. One step up. Be with you in a minute. Cliff? All right, Jimbo. Run along. Help your mom. See you in an hour. One hour, sure. Okay, Maury, you're next. I'll poke, Maury. Just help me, Cliff. Just, uh, oh, yeah, what's it going to be today? No, you tell me. I haven't seen myself for a while. <laughs> Been longer than an hour, hasn't it? Uh, been almost two hours. <clears throat> say, did you hear what Will Rogers said to President Coolidge when they met? Y you see, Rogers had this here bet that he could get old Coolidge to smile finally, and when they were introduced in the White House, Rogers said, sorry, I didn't get the name. <laughs> Where is he? he? He's a good boy, Moy. There, there must be a reason. I don't care about reasons. Look, as soon as Bert comes back, I I'll take you home. No. I'm not your problem. I can make it on my own. No, no, wait. I'll be fine. My word, I'll be back. You were not You're supposed to be back in an hour. Well, it took longer than I expected. Well, no, I'm not going to be dependent on you or anyone. Just get out of here! Look, I didn't mean it. Just leave. I'll make it on my own. So, how are you? Well, I'd be a lot better if you'd answer my phone calls. If I did, what is there to say? How would you like to go down to the Narrows? For a picnic, we can double date with Hank and Agnes. Oh, yeah. Blind date. Stop it! How long are you going to go on punishing me, all of us, for what's happened to you? I ask you as... As nicely as I can, but you... 
There is simply no need to make bitter and sarcastic remarks. No need. Well, when you make up your mind, you call me. Sorry, I can't go. I don't want to waste Beth's time. Beth's got a mind of her own. If she didn't want to be with you, she'd say so. You have to start someplace. At least try. Yeah, maybe you're right. Good. I'll call her right now. No. It was a wonderful day. Wasn't it, Maureen? It was terrific. I had a great time. Thanks for insisting. Oh. Now I'll see you back to the car. No. No, I can make it. Okay. Is that you? Can I come up, Mr. Frank? Sure, if you want. I got a new job, afternoons after school. That's good, I'm glad for you. I sell and deliver the Saturday Evening Post. Well, I don't read magazines these days, but if it'll help, I'll take a subscription. How much? Oh, oh no, no, that's not what I'm here for. There's an article in this week's issue. It's called The Seeing Eye. Look, if it's about some new kind of eye operation, I've been through all that with the doctors. There is no operation for my kind of blindness, so... Thanks, but forget it. But this isn't about an operation. This is about dogs. Dogs that could possibly see for blind people. Dogs that could see for blind people? It's by this woman, Dorothy Eustace, in Switzerland, who wants to train them. Well, sit down. Read it to me, Jim. Well, she starts it like this. To everyone, I think there is always something particularly pathetic about a blind man when he is suddenly robbed of his freedom. The challenge, therefore, is to restore his independence, and such trained animals may be the way to accomplish that. She ends it this way. The specially trained German Shepherd dog may become the eyes of the blind. 
Isn't that amazing, Mr. Frank? That woman's name again. Dorothy Eustace. Uh, I'm gonna write to her, right now. How do you mean, write? Where? You can't just address it to Mrs. Eustace, somewhere in Switzerland. Well, I'll send it to the Saturday Evening Post. Oh, son. Yeah, please. Wait. I can come and go as I please. Switzerland again today. How long should it take for a letter to get to Switzerland back? Well, it depends. At least a month. Has it been well over two months? Some people don't answer right away. Some people don't answer at all. It'll come. Hi, Maury. May I come in? Oh. My best, sure. I just thought you might have been impediment with a letter from Switzerland. How are you coming with that? Is it difficult? Yeah. I keep practicing. I've been wanting to talk with you. Well, here I am. I want to talk about you and me. Well, before this happened, we were to get married. Yeah. Things have kind of changed, huh? Not with me, they haven't. I need time. Maury, I'm here to help you work it out. I have to do it myself. You couldn't possibly understand. I'm trying to. But I need from you. Emmett. 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 It's here. It's here. It is from Switzerland, isn't it? Yes. Mrs. Dorothy used this? Yes, sorry. Oh, Maury. It's here. It's finally here. Here, Mom. Read it for me. My dear Mr. Frank, I have never trained a dog for the blind. However, if you have the courage to come all the way to Switzerland, we will be able to provide you with a dog guide. I have a trainer all lined up, and we have found a beautiful dog guide for you. It's difficult training. You see, the dog has to learn to stop at the top of every staircase and at every street curb. Oh! Good girl, buddy. Good girl. The dog must stifle its natural impulses. Oh, sorry! Oh, sorry! Oh, sorry! The dog must also learn when to refuse your command in order to steer you around low-hanging objects. This all takes time and great concentration. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. 
Next week we enroll her at the university in Geneva. Oh, she's magnifique. <laughs> Good girl, buddy. Oh, she is ready, Jack. She is oh, ready. Oh, come on, Mr. Frank is ready. <laughs> here? Is this it? Yes. We'll get you settled in. Well, my dog, where is he? I want to get to know him right away. Oh, it's not a he. It happens to be a she. You see, they're gentler and they're easier to handle. But, Mr. Frank, before you can even meet your dog, you and Jack and I will have a lot of work to do. Oh, well, I was hoping to get started right away. Well, but you have a great deal to learn. In the meantime, just get used to the altitude and uh, your surroundings. All right, let's just go inside. Yes, yes, of course. And because she is your guide and companion, in a way, your closest friend. We've named her Buddy. Buddy. Okay, what next? Main thing, when she does something good, reward her. Oh, with bits of food. No, with words. Two words. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. If she does anything wrong, say phooey. Phooey? That's all? Yes. Phooey. And now, most important of all, this is Buddy's harness and your means of communication with her. Now, without this on, she is just a dog with all the needs of a dog to run and to play. But once this is put on her, she is your eyes. And that's her part of the bargain. Now, yours is to respect this harness, use it gently, and just give her the simple orders of forward, right, left, and she will obey. Forward, right, and left. And your left hand will be on the harness. Get a grip on it. Get used to the feel of it. All right, now. Call her. Buddy, come here. Louder and stronger. Buddy, come here. Come here. The words, the important words. Good girl. Buddy's a good girl. to really start to be a team. Forward, buddy. Buddy first. Buddy, forward. Keep your, your free arm close to your body. And now, one more try. Ah, uh, Morris, Morris, give the dog a chance to respond. Gently, boy. Buddy, forward. Stay, stay close to her. Well, what do you think? He's got the determination and the desire. But the patience, the understanding? He's young and eager. We'll see. Buddy? Forward, buddy. <laughs> Buddy, forward. I said forward. Mm. Buddy! I said forward! Sorry we had to let that happen, Morris, but 
But he wasn't disobeying your orders. She was exercising what we call intelligent disobedience. Now, she's trained to do that when she knows your orders could lead to danger. Don't underestimate your dog. And in the future, if she refuses to obey, just trust her and follow her. Because she doesn't want to get killed any more than you do. Why does he have to be so independent? I admire it, but something's missing. Call it unity, teamwork. I had such hope of what it would be like, but it isn't. The dog is ready. She knows how important she is to him. But does Morris know? We shouldn't delay the big test any longer. I think they should go down to the village tomorrow. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Remember, you've only got Buddy and your own ears to depend on now. I know. Buddy can't read traffic lights or signs, so I have to listen to the sounds of traffic to know when the cars come to a stop. Most important, when Buddy stops, you're at a curb or a step. If she blocks your path... Stop you're... at once. That means danger. I know all that. What do you think I've been doing all this time? This is it, Morris. We're here. Morris, trust yourself to Buddy. Have confidence in her. Remember the routine. Down to the corner, turn right. Down the steps, turn left. Two blocks. Cross the main street. One block. Then retrace your steps. Come back here. We'll be waiting. Good luck. Good luck. Buddy, right. Excuse me? Ah, uh, may I help you across the street? Oh, no. No, thank you. I can make it on my own. Merci. Attention, rejoins! Jack? Here? Yes, yeah. we're here. Well, how did I do? You both did just fine. <laughs> Good girl, buddy. <laughs> when do I graduate? Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I think it is? It certainly is. This is an occasion that calls for a toast. To our seeing eye team. 
a memorable day in all our lives. Oh, you two will never know how it felt today. When this nice woman asked me, can I help you across the street? I said, no, thank you. I can make it on my own. On my own. So I want to make a toast to the two finest people I know. This is Dorothy Eustace, Mr. Jack Humphrey. Thank you. Here. Thank you, Morris. Here, here. Now, let's all sit down, Morris. Mm -hmm. Be comfortable, because there is something we would like to discuss with you. Just sit on the sofa. And here's your champagne. Thank you. Morris, we chose you from all the Americans who applied because of your determination. Well, thank you. But we just didn't teach you to help one blind young man. Uh, I guess I don't understand. Well, our plan was more ambitious than that. You see, I'm from the States myself, and I left when I married my husband, who was English. The day he died, I promised myself I'd go back home with a purpose. Well, I have found that purpose, to start a school for dogs like Buddy. A whole school? Mm-hmm. But Jack and I can't succeed unless you and Buddy succeed first. We have succeeded. Well, only in the first step. Because back home, you'll be living in a world where life and people, and especially traffic, move faster. Oh, but with a dog like Buddy, I can but succeed. But Morris, in a way, Buddy may even make your problem more difficult. It's impossible. I feel so confident. No, people back home don't understand dogs like Buddy. I guess I never thought of it like that. But we have to, because the one thing we learned when we were training buddies is that people don't accept dogs like that readily. And you have to change their minds. I mean, the future of our work now depends on you and Buddy. times. Buddy, you sleep. Over. There. Morris, may I come in? Yes. Sure, Mrs. Eustace. The travel bureau just called and you and Buddy have to be ready to leave tomorrow. Great. Well, good night. I'm going to miss the both of you very much. Thank you. I'm going to miss you, too. Jesse, please, come away from the window. He's so late. We should have gone down to the depot to meet him. Now, his letter said he wanted to do this on his own. But we have to accept that. Or at least pretend that we accept it. You know, I still think we should have kept it. His letter said no. I meant when he asked, what will we tell him? The truth. What else? Come on. Buddy, stop. Buddy, left. Buddy, forward. 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 
Mika. So tell me, why no cap? Maury, I bought two feeding dishes, one for the water and one for the food. The man at the pet store said they were the best, and I said, my son's dog, Buddy, deserves the best. <laughs> no, Jesse, please, I want to know. We sent you money for everything. Why didn't you take a cab from the station? Just to save a few pennies? Oh, I, I wanted to take a cab. I even offered to pay double the meter. So? So that cab driver wouldn't give me a ride. Not with Buddy. You wouldn't? A dog like this? I can't believe it. On the train from New York, we had to sleep in the baggage car. No. Mrs. Eustace warned me, but I didn't expect it to be this bad. Now I want to call Beth, tell her I'm back. Oh, son, before you do, um, um, well, I mean, uh, um, Jesse. Maury, you've been away a long time. Six months. Well, a young girl gets lonely, and there are other young men. After all, Beth is a very pretty girl. Are you telling me she's found someone else? Not only found. Engaged? I'm afraid, yes. Oh, well. I always thought we'd be. I hope she's, she's very happy. She, uh, she deserves it. Oh, hey, I forgot. Uh, you owe me $10,000. Yankees won the series four straight games. Oh, that was a fluke. Frankly, I think those games were fixed. But if you want to take 10000 from your own father, okay. <laughs> yes, Nancy? Who? Mr. Frank? No, I don't remember him. But send him in anyway. Mr. Weston? Oh, yes, Mr. Frank. Now I recognize you. Here, let me help you. Hey, that's uh, quite a smart dog you got there. I'm glad you noticed. Because I need your help so that other blind people can get their independence with dogs like these. Independence? Mm -hmm. I see. Well, with Buddy, I can cross the busiest street in Nashville as safely as you. So I want you to arrange a demonstration. We gotta get the word out to all blind people there is help. Way to be free, active again. Uh -huh. And you want me to organize such a demonstration? Well, learning Braille is fine, but well, we blind people want more and deserve more. Dogs like Buddy can make it possible. My dear Mr. Frank, don't you realize for half a century we've been trying to wipe out of the public's mind the image of the blind beggar and his tin cup and his dog? This is no beggar's dog. Buddy's my eyes. She'll make it possible for me to resume work again. That's all blind people want. A chance to be self-supporting on our own. So you see, you have to help. I see. Well, we here at the Institute don't want to disagree with you, but we have found through the years that our methods not only work best for us, but also for the people we serve. And I personally feel that it's bad enough to be blind without being tied to a dog. Fui. Excuse me? Nothing. Come on, girl. Let's get out of here. Cards, applications.
application for insurance? Found. Maury. Uh. I know, I know. You have to do it for yourself. But just one thing. Yes, Ma. <laughs> Thanks, Ma. Good luck, son. Luck or not, I'm not coming back today without selling at least one policy. You sure that's enough time? In case you have trouble? Don't worry, Ma. I'm getting on that bus. Going to work. Wait. Boom. I love you. dogs allowed on this bus. But he's not just a dog, she's the way I get around. You have to realize I... I don't have to realize anything except the company rules. Dogs aren't allowed on buses. Look, I'm trying to get to work. I have a 10 o'clock appointment downtown with a very important prospect. <laughs> Please, mister, don't ask me to break the company's rules. It could mean my job. Come on, driver, let's go. This is it. First call and first prospect. Buddy forward. Save me the elevator. Hey, where do you think you're going? Didn't you see that sign? No dogs allowed. Oh, I didn't know. But anyway, we, we got a sign that says no dogs allowed. But this dog is different. Yeah, beautiful dog, but no dogs allowed, period. I'm sorry. Mister, please. Sorry, sorry. Let me explain. I'm sorry. Mr. Walker? Yeah, Scotty, what is it? Well, that elevator door on the fourth floor? What about it? Well, it's stuck again. We can't get it closed. Ah, uh, must be a fault. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, let's go down to the basement and see what we can do about it. What's the matter, girl? My name is Morris Frank. I'm here to see a Mr. Tyler. You're late, Mr. Frank. Yes, I know. Uh, Mr. Tyler waited as long as he could. He uh, had a luncheon appointment and uh, a meeting after that. Figures. I'm sorry. Yes, of course. Come on, buddy. Come on.
so. But there is no elevator. Saved your life. Well, that's what she's trying to do. Of course, Mr. Tyler, the protection of your family outweighs all other considerations. But I must also point out, at the same time, you are building a very healthy retirement. This fund. is a terrific dog, Mr. Frank. Tell me, how did it train them like this? So what I'm suggesting is a 20 pound. You know, life we got policy. a dog doesn't do anything but eat and sleep. Never saw such a lazy animal. Mr. Tyler? About the policy? Oh, I made up my mind to take that 20 minutes ago. The uh, doctor will uh, call you about your physical. Terrific. Drop in any time you're in the neighborhood. But bring Buddy, you hear? Sure. Never go anywhere without her. Don't blame you. That dog's a better salesman than you are. <laughs> Got all your prospects for tomorrow lined up? Yeah, all, all four. Oh, so what if you only made three calls today? You made a sale, didn't you? Just luck. I'll have to be able to cover more territory. I can't walk all over Nashville. Sometimes I think Buddy's more of a hindrance than a help. Maury, what did you mean by that? What do you mean about what? What you just said about Buddy. I didn't mean it. Maybe you did. I notice how you treat her. What do you mean how I treat her? She's fed, exercised regularly, sleeps in a nice warm place. Dad, she's like a member of the family. Yet there are times, too many times, when I get the feeling you resent her. Now, just one minute. Yes, resent. You are so driven by your need for independence that you resent the very thing that makes you independent. I'm not independent. I'm not even a good insurance man anymore. That sale I made to Tyler, I didn't make it, Buddy did. Now half of a team like Laurel and Hardy. She's a star, I'm just a straight man. I see. Is that the reason why you broke your promise? I never broke a promise. What promise? Well, there have been three letters from Dorothy Eustace lately, two from Jack Humphrey, but I didn't see you answer them. What about the promise you made to them to spread the work of the seeing eye? I tried. I've been to places, talked to people, they just don't care. Nobody cares. And you're content to let it go at that? Look, Dad, I have to reestablish my own life first. Then I'll be able to do what I promised. sensation of the whole sales convention. Yeah, that was cute when the vice president gave you that award for writing the most new business during the year. <laughs> that was cute the way Buddy took the plaque in her mouth. <laughs> Look out, Maury!
week in the hospital is a week too long, huh, buddy? Yeah. Good girl. Doctors sure give a lot of tests. I'll get it. Evening. Yes, can I help you? I hope I'm not bothering you. My name is uh, Mike McShane. I'm with the Nashville Banner. I was over to the hospital today. They said that you had uh, already been discharged. What can I do for you? I just want to find out if what I heard was true. What's that? Well, you're blind and that your dog here leads you around busy streets safely. Not just that. So the police said this dog actually saved you from that burning car? She sure did. Mr. Frank, if this dog is everything that I've heard, would you allow one of our staff to photograph both of you in action so that I could write a big feature story? You know, I've been trying to get people to listen. I'll do anything to make people listen. Mr. Frank, we have a date. Is tomorrow too soon? Tomorrow? Mm. We'll be anywhere you say. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll phone you in the morning. Evening. picture in the paper. This is going to get you statewide coverage. Thanks. What a lovely story. Everyone in Tennessee will know about you now. I certainly hope so. You know everything in the newspaper I couldn't have done without your help. And I'll never forget that. Thanks, Mom. Dad. For everything. Again? All right. Oh, I'm ringing off the hook all morning. Hello? Yes, this is the Frank residence. Yes, just a minute. Maury. Yes. Yes, speaking. Yes, that's my picture. Yeah, my dog. Oh, I see. No, unfortunately not in this country, but but send me a letter, Reverend. I'll, I'll see what I can do. You're welcome. Bye. You know, I never realized. What is it, son? Mrs. Eustace and Jack, they've got to come over here and start that school. Now, we got to help all these people who've been calling. Come here, buddy. Very important. 
Dear Morris, as soon as we arrive in Nashville, we have to find a house, one that we can convert both into an office and living quarters. It must have enough land around it to accommodate many guide dogs and room for a growing number of kennels. Lots of room for lots of dogs. And if we grow as fast as I expect, this will only be the beginning. Jack and I were talking, Morris, and we decided that uh, we've got to move on from here. Who? Oh, but why? Well, for bigger quarters first, and uh, the Nashville summers are just so hot that it's not good for the dogs we have to train. She's right. We lose a lot of valuable training time when it gets hot. Mm -hmm. So we decided to move to a place up north where the climate is easier and where we'll be much closer to the large populated centers. Hmm. Where? Do you have a place in mind? Yes, it's a place called Morristown. It's in New Jersey. So you found a place with larger quarters? Mm-hmm. Morristown. You hear that, buddy? Yeah. You hear that? Morristown. Sounds like it was named for me. Take a good look, buddy. Last time I walked down this street. So the only word for it is a mansion. Except from now on, our word for it will be home. Mm. And there's that much acreage? No, oh, it's vast. In that case, buddy, free time. <laughs> if you excuse me, I'm going to work. Bye-bye. Bye, Jack. Well, such spacious quarters. <laughs> we ought to be able to make a lot of progress fast. Oh, progress is a word I'm becoming allergic to. Progress for everybody but the blind. Don't I know it. Buddy and I are getting more than a little allergic to riding in baggage cars. In time, dear boy, in time. There's got to be a quicker way. Uh, sir, you asked to see the proprietor? Is something wrong? I'm sure we can straighten it out to your satisfaction. I'm usually guided by a dog. She sees my eyes. Uh, yes, I've, I've heard about you. You want me to allow dogs into my restaurant. I'm sorry, but I can't. Why? People would be very disturbed at having animals in eating places. Dogs give off an odor. Do you smell something strange? I smell nothing, sir. Neither do I. Okay, buddy. Now. Well, sir, what do you have to say about that? You didn't even know she was there, did you? Sir, I said no dogs allowed. Okay. Come on, buddy. Let's go. I know a classier place than this. Buddy? Buddy? Come here, girl. Come here. Not hungry, huh? What's the matter, girl? You all right? I beg your pardon. Is that one of those seeing eye dogs I've read about? Yes, it is. Remarkable animals, I guess. They certainly are. Apparently, they've opened up the world for people who've been prisoners of their blindness. Oh, you think so, do you? I say something wrong. Well, just try taking one of these remarkable animals onto a bus or most railroads. You'll find out very soon how they've opened the world to the blind. And not just here. We had the same battle in Nashville for three years. Didn't realize that. Well, most people don't. You see, that's why our work is so discouraging. Every battle is one at a time, and uh, most times we don't succeed. One at a time, huh? Uh, Mr. Oh, Frank, Morris Frank. This is Mrs. Dorothy Eustace. How do you do? Um, How do you do? William Crystal. Mr. Frank, maybe there's a more effective way more effective way? Such as a state law making it mandatory to admit these dogs to all public facilities. Law? Well, that would be great. I could talk to my colleagues in the state senate about it. 
Senator Crystal. <laughs> of course. How do you do? Well, look, I, I think we should talk at length about this. Happy to, Mr. Frank. Come on in. Morris, I'd like to talk to the Senator. Oh, great. I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to it, too. Look forward. Well, sit down, Senator. The um, x-rays aren't very definitive. Well, what about the pain she had? If you detect she's suffering pain, you let me know. We'll, we'll do something about it. That's all? There's nothing to worry about. It only takes what we call a tincture of time. Time takes care of most of these things. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Come on, girl. Let's go. Let's go. did the right thing. He's so dependent on that dog. What good would it do? The animal has maybe a year to live. I think they should make the most of it. Morris, it's almost a year since I introduced that bill and it's still stuck in committee. Well, what's needed is continuing muscle Political muscle. Can't you make those senators realize what this would mean to the blind? We vote too, you know. Sure you vote, but how many are there of you? And against you, there's a host of powerful owners of all kinds of businesses who don't want to risk antagonizing their other customers. Do you mean that there is nothing that can be done? I'm afraid it's going to take more than I'll be able to do now that I'm a lame duck. Senator Crystal. I'm not running for re-election and my colleagues know this, so I don't have the clout I used to have. But this bill... This bill is the one thing I wanted to accomplish before I left here. It's too bad you didn't come along a little sooner. I understand. But that won't stop the work of the seeing eye. Nothing is going to stop our work, Senator. Nothing. No. Not even a lot of senators who are blinder than we are. Who would have thought all those years ago all this would have happened? That they do so well. Buddy, how's it feel to be a pioneer, huh? Oh, let's see Mrs. Henry. So when anybody tries to tell me with words or attitudes that they feel sorry for me, I like to remind them. Every day you cited people read in your newspapers about pedestrians being hit by cars while crossing the street. Well, how many persons with seeing eye dogs have you heard of being hit by a car? <laughs> Dog wouldn't have it. In fact, if you want to know the truth, I have more confidence in Buddy's judgment than I do in my own. Now relax, everyone. There's still a lot of ice cream and cake left and plenty of happy music. Enjoy. I guess we got them all fed, fat, and happy. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks for volunteering. You were terrific. Oh, thank you. How are we doing here? May I join you two? Please. I'm Lois Coleman. Morris Frank. Yeah, I brought you some dessert. Oh. Your ice cream is at 12 o'clock, your cake is at 6. You know about that, huh? Well, I learned how today. What brings you here? I used to pass this place every day on my way to school. I always wondered what you did here. And uh, today, with the, with the music and the crowd, I decided to come on in and find out. And? 
like it. I think it's a wonderful thing that you're doing. May I show you around? Please. But you have to finish your ice cream first. <laughs> people's attention to our cause. Oh, it's a great idea. Now if we just had some restaurants, places to put them. Hello, seeing eye, Mrs. Eustace speaking. Lois? Yes, yes, he is, Morris. It's, uh, it's for you. Thank you. Hello. Well, of course, Lois. Any time. Okay, goodbye. You hear that? That's funny. She's coming over. I told you she's crazy about me. Hmm? <laughs> That's her. Lois? Lori. I can hardly wait to get here. You can hardly wait. Now, before you say a word, let me say something. Ever since that first time that we talked at the party, I've been thinking. About what? About Senator Crystal. About his bill in the Senate and how much time and energy it takes to get some of those stubborn senators to act. Yes? Well, I've got time. I've got energy. And I want to become a one-woman task force to help get the Seeing Eye Law passed. Is that the only reason you had to come right over? No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Lois? chance. Most of the senators on that committee are sorry they gave women the right to vote. And they only did that because their wives nagged them to death about it. You expect to do something that I, with my experience, have been unable to do for almost a year. Senator, if Maury and I were to try, would you back us up? Of course. You've got my vote. Then we're going to try. Good for you. Senator, give women the vote, and there's no telling where it'll end. Now you've got it. Like that young woman who haunts the halls of this legislative building. Like Banquo's ghost. She's behind every door, in every elevator. Sometimes I fully expect to find her in the men's room. And it's your fault, you know. Al, she's a citizen of the state. 
and she's entitled to petition the legislature. Let me say this. There's no one who sympathizes with the blind more than I do. But do you know how many letters and phone calls I've received from businessmen in my district against this bill? Now, I say sympathy is fine, but we've got to look on the practical side. How many voters in your district are blind? And how many are like us, normal people? I resent your inference that blind people aren't normal. Oh. As a matter of fact, I resent your whole attitude. Protecting the handicap isn't some act of charity we perform. It's a duty we assume the day we take our oath of office. We shouldn't have to be hounded to pass this seeing eye bill. We should have passed it by acclamation long ago. Spoken with all the idealism of someone who's not going to run for office again. <laughs> ah, but dear Senator Crystal, think of us. We're going to have to justify our vote in the next election. Give us some ammunition. Such as? Well, you deluged us with all kinds of amazing stories on these seeing-eye dogs. Especially that one called Buddy. How well-behaved he is. She. All oh, right, she. How well-behaved she is. How intelligent she is. So I say, let's see the proof. Then, if I do vote for this bill, and I'm challenged on it, I can say, I saw it for myself. Uh, what do you want? What do I want? <laughs> A demonstration. A demonstration for the entire committee. Now, uh, let's see what she can really do. Huh? That's fair, isn't it? Sounds fair enough to me. Of course, your friends will have to accept the challenge. You'll ask them? I will. Good. Then one week from today, right here in the Senate chamber. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a very tough test. Now, if they pass your test, will you vote for the bill? <laughs> if they pass my test. Good. <laughs> my boy, in politics, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Or a dog. Call from Senator Crystal. No, Morris isn't here. He and Buddy went off, but uh, he didn't say where. Then I'll wait. This is too important. You both must know right away. Well, Doctor, is the pain now constant? Especially in the last few days. Well, we can give her something for her pain. But it won't cure her, will it? Some things we can't cure. time to have done something about it. If I had eyes, I would have seen. If you had eyes, you never would have had Buddy. You can't say no. It's the same as admitting that Buddy couldn't pass their test, whatever it is. She's not well. You can't get used to another dog without weeks of training. Morris. This could be the breakthrough that we've been fighting for all these years. I just don't see how you can refuse. Darling, I know how you must feel. But Mrs. Eustace is right.
Come here, girl. Come on. So you don't want to get up on the bed with me, huh? Okay, have it your way. You remember the day we went into town in Switzerland? Hmm? Me trying to look so confident. You knew I was scared of death, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, you had enough courage for both of us. As you always have. <laughs> well, look, tomorrow you gotta take one more walk. <laughs> we walked a lot of miles together, and tomorrow you have to take one more walk. Our most important one. You gotta help me, buddy. Just one more time. Please? chair under the aisle more next to that wastebasket. Yes, that should do fine. Oh, and you, young man, uh, put that uh, stool out in the aisle more, will you? Yes, sir. A little more, a little more. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you. When I heard about this, I didn't believe it, but it's true. Senator Brighton. Yes? This is monstrous. What's the problem, Senator? No dog or no blind person will ever encounter a maze like this in everyday life. Take some of this away. Senator Crystal, for a year you've been telling us how smart these dogs are. Well, if they are, I'm sure your friends won't have any trouble in maneuvering around a few obstructions like this. You call this a few obstructions? I said it would be a test. And it is. Nothing less will win my vote. <laughs> and you don't seem to have the vote, Senator. Senator Brighton, they're here. Al, before you do this... They accepted the challenge, didn't they? There's an old political maxim, Senator, that you taught me. Put up or shut up. Now's the time to put up. Admit the visitors. Al. What in the world? Who allowed these people in? Word got around and they want to see. Then we'll show them. What is going on here? Senator Brighton. Ladies, this is a test of Mr. Frank and his dog. Please do not say another word. Mr. Frank, will you make your way to the speaker's rostrum, please? I'm sorry, but you can see for yourself. I knew they wouldn't make it. Come on, girl. Now, 
that's not fair. Look who's crying unfair. Gentlemen, apparently you set up some obstacles for us. Well, you have just witnessed a demonstration, what we at the Seeing Eye call intelligent disobedience. Are there any questions?
Her name is Karen. She's young, she's pretty, and she's vanished into thin air. They searched the ruins, but there was no sign of Karen. No sign at all. Karen is trying to come back. I think she's still out there. It's not Karen outside there. Don't you understand? It's someone else. I had such a funny, cold feeling out by the woods. Like someone was watching me. Only Jan can help Karen. But who's going to help Jan? Betty Davis, Carol Baker, David McCallum, and Lynn Holly Johnson enter a new dimension in mind-shattering suspense. The Watcher in the Woods. Robin Hood, a stunning achievement in the art of animation with a classic story loved by millions, featuring some of the most memorable characters of any Disney animated film. Peter Ustinov as Prince John. Mother always did like Richard best. <laughs> Phil Harris as Little John. Are we good guys or bad guys? Andy Devine as Friar Tuck. Get out of my church! Roger Miller as Alan Adale. And my job is to... Tell it like it is. Pat Buttram as the Sheriff of Nottingham. Well, greetings from your friendly neighborhood tax collector. <laughs> and Terry Thomas as Sir Hiss. Uh, a mere slip of a forked tongue, Your Majesty. <laughs> it's the legendary art of Walt Disney, a family adventure. Don't you worry none, Sheriff. The safety's on old Betsy. <laughs> Robin Hood. Walt Disney Productions, no deposit, no return. Give me that! And this is a pick for luck. Just put that on. Boy, a couple of real crooks. What'd you get? So far, just a couple of kids. And a skunk. A skunk? It's just a pet. <laughs> it's a nonsense hide-and-seek comedy caper. Drop me! Where everything that can happen... does happen. You measure! I'll teach you to look at my window! <laughs> For grandfather, David Niven, it's an upsetting experience. Peter, this is absurd. He's got millions and billions. Hold it. The money will help all of us. Of course it will. Come on, Duke. You're the clown and I'm the big bad one. Almost crooks, Darren McGavin and Don Knotts have a half million dollars on their mind. This is too late to lower that to 25000 See Walt Disney Productions. Hide and seek comedy caper. No deposit, no return. They're back. And those wacky warriors from the legendary land of Gaul have to pass 12 superhuman tests to save their kingdom. And every task is a real thriller. The Cave of the Beast. Mm. And what is this beast like? I've no idea no one has ever come out alive. Join Asterix and his friends on an odyssey of ghouls and giggles. We'll have lots of fun. Don't miss the 12 tasks of Asterix. 